Thank you for joining us. Today, we are dealing with the question, Are Ghosts Real? Joining us here is Gary Bates, the CEO of our US office in Atlanta, Georgia. So Gary, you have written a lot about and research about the UFO phenomena. Mm -hmm. So today we're dealing with the question, are ghosts real? Is that related somewhat? Uh, it is in the terms of the way that uh, things manifest and things present themselves. Um, you know, with the UFO phenomenon, people can have real experiences. And in this area, uh, people can have real experiences too. So we've just got to try to determine what those experiences are. Okay, so people are claiming to to see ghosts and spirits, uh, but what do you mean by ghosts and what do you mean by spirits? Well, there's scriptural passages in that, but let's let's first talk about something. We see this stuff on TV. Yeah, there are lots and lots of shows. Uh, you've got mediums that sit in front of people and they claim that they're talking to their family members. Have you had any encounters yourself? No, no, I haven't. Um, but. I've had someone close to me who's had an encounter and I've met lots of people who've had encounters, which is why I've written about it. So let me give you an example. I, I was the first one to become a Christian in my family. And I remember when I was a child, my father, who's who became a Christian, and he's he died a few years ago, he's now with the Lord. Um, but he told me a story that when he was a child, you know, he's in a, a big bed with his siblings. He grew up in terrible poverty. And he said that the spirit of his deceased father appeared at the bottom of his bed. And that his father gave him messages like, you know, I'm here to look after you and I'm comforting you. We see the same messages in here, even within the UFO experience. But years later, I revisited that because I was never reconciled with it. And I said so to my dad, I said, how do you know it was your deceased father? And he said, well, his dad lost a leg in the First World War. And the person standing at the bottom of his bed, you know, looked like his dad and one of his legs was missing. And I said, well, think about that. I said, Does that mean we go on into this? netherworld or you know this this region where these spirits can apparently visit us with carrying our infirmities and you know what about people who've suffered horrible disfigurement and all that type of stuff so it's clear that's people don't think about those types of things and and one of the things i think you know just to be upfront let's just call it for what it is like the ufo phenomenon this is a manifestation of deceptive spirits that are, that are preying upon us and there's nothing more you can be vulnerable to than having a deceased, an alleged deceased relative appear. You know, a guy, you, you know Darren Brown on TV. Yes, I do, yeah. Um, he's a uh, hip, hypnotist. Uh, he's an atheist. He's a skeptic. He thinks religion is for weak people. And there's a show, uh, which people can even watch on YouTube, where he's in a live audience and he tells people, I'm going to pretend to be one of these mediums, you know, like the crossing over. Mm. And, he, you know, he summons somebody's deceased relative in the room and he tells people up front I'm going to fake it I'm a hoaxer yes and then he picks out a lady and he says you know like you're there Joel and he says so I'm seeing somebody right uh, uh, and she's got gray hair could could be your aunt or your your mother uh, is that right oh yeah yeah my my grandmother had gray hair oh okay and her name begins with an e or a g and it goes on and then he starts relating stories that allegedly happened to her with a child and she starts crying mm -hmm. But he's told her up front, I'm a, I'm a faker, I'm a hoaxer. Yes. But it's the emotional connection that we have. And so this is where I think the enemy kind of plays dirty tricks with us um, and the experiences can be real, they can be personal, and it causes the person to dive, dive in a little bit deeper. So I, I don't think ghosts as we commonly understand them are real. Okay. So when somebody, and we see this on the TVs and movies all the time, when someone visits a medium and the medium channels like like a ghost or spirit, are you saying that it's all a scam and that there's nothing that's real? No, I'm not. I, I think we have to be careful to try to tar everything. We're good as that as Christians and we want a one-size-fits-all answer. Like the UFO phenomenon, some of them are hoaxes, some of them are real, as in real experiences, and I think they're, they're real deceptive spirits. We see it similar here. I think some of those TV mediums are fakers, but who knows, you know, who, who they could be, you know, getting in touch with, uh, basically. Uh, so, you know, we know these can be real. The, the Old Testament has lots and lots of warnings about having nothing to do with the heavenly host, the starry host, because we'll be led astray. 
So Gary, in, in Mark, we read that the disciples were on the boat, um, you know, there was a storm and they saw Jesus walking towards them and they got afraid. And my question is this, you see, if you read the King James in this passage, it reads this way, but when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out. So they call it a spirit. Yeah. The same passage in the ESV reads, they thought it was a ghost. So right. was, is it a ghost or a spirit? Yeah. And then again, when I read Matthew, Matthew has another passage. And here in this instance, it says in the King James again that the, the disciples saw him walking on the water and they say it is a spirit. In the King James, it, it says it is a ghost. No, the ESV says it's a ghost. Yeah, the ESV says it's a ghost. I, I know those well because I've been challenged about them because people have had experiences who even claim to be Christians and say, well, ghosts are real because I've seen one. Um what we're rendering is a change of under of a change of language. I mean, our language changes over time, and our various Bible translations reflect that. What we need to do there is you've got to look at the Greek word behind "ghost" in the ESV and where it's rendered "spirit" in the King James. The the, the term there is "phantasma," and "phantasma" literally means an apparition. What we commonly or culturally understand as a ghost. So the disciples were saying, "Ah, oh, we're seeing a ghost." So in context, you know, Jesus was doing some pretty incredible things and now all of a sudden he's walking on the water. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, physical beings can't walk on water, but he's the creator, so he can. So they resorted to kind of cultural beliefs. And what we need to remember is it doesn't matter what country you're from, to be honest, what religion you practice, within that group you'll always get a people who a set of people who resort to these cultural ideas. So they were literally saying, yes, we think we saw a ghost, phantasma, as in, you know, a deceased spirit of someone walking. So we can contrast this, Joel, with another passage in the New Testament, and that's that famous example. It's in Luke 24 mm -hmm. where Jesus appears in the locked room with the disciples. People say he walked through the walls. Actually, doesn't say that. He just he, he appeared. And it says there they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit Mm -hmm. ESV. Yes. But the King James also says spirit. There's no contrast between the two translations. The Greek word behind this is pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A. Pneuma. And it means spirit, as in the type of spirit you and I have. See, they actually, Jesus actually said, touch me and see, I, you know, I have flesh and bones. So what with, when we use the word pneuma, what we're talking about is that God given God breathed spirit. You and I are physical, but guess what? We have a spirit. So that is a real person, a real spirit compared with a cultural idea of ghosts that's that's being referred to. And let's face it, the disciples weren't bastions of biblical knowledge at the time. <laughs> so you know Jesus had to correct them on on uh, numerous occasions. Okay. But what about the Old Testament? I mean in Samuel we read about how King Saul consulted a medium and actually saw Ben the Ben consulting mediums, but he was depressed. He went to consult a medium and they call up the spirit of Samuel. So right. is that Samuel himself? Is that a ghost? Is well, that a lot of people have said, oh, well, it was just a deceiving spirit or a familiar spirit. But again, the context, you mentioned that, well, Saul was worried about David rising to power. Yes. David was in God's favor. Saul was losing favor. So he was paranoid. And he goes to a spiritist, which under the admonition of God, he banned in the land. And I think this is a fulfillment of kind of that passage we read in uh, 2 Thessalonians 2. You know, God sends them a strong delusion that they might believe a lie. This stuff can be real. And if you want to chase after it, well, guess what? You'll get it. You'll get deception. Mm. Okay. So Saul goes after it. Now, what does the text actually say? You know, there's an old saying, isn't it? So say what the text says and no more. You're a theologian. What does the actual text say? Who was it? It says that it was Samuel himself. It was Samuel. Yes. So I think this is a rare ex exception where God, and he is the creator, he's the only one in control of our spirits. When we die, he determines whether we go to heaven or we go to hell. And this is an exception where God says to Saul, okay, you want this? I'm going to allow it. Samuel comes up and prophesies that Saul is going to be killed on the battlefield. What happens? He died. He dies. So another thing too, Joel, is the witch herself 
was surprised. Yes, that's right. So she actually got more than she she bargained <laughs> for there as well. So it's a controversial passage. People have different views, but I think you look at the text, says it was Samuel. And again, you know, we've said at the beginning, people can have all sorts of experiences with otherworldly beings, but if they're claiming to be our dead relatives coming back, biblically, I have a real issue with that because I don't think it's permissible. Now, it's my view that, Fallen angels and spirits and demons cannot tell the future. Only God is outside of time. They can cast a wide net of prophecies. I've seen it in the UFO movement and occasionally they might get one right, but often it's like a train wreck because the majority are wrong. So I think we're seeing an example of a fall from grace, people, Saul going after something he shouldn't, God allows it and says, you're going to, and this is basically going to be a form of punishment. You know what's going to be coming as a result. So. You know, Gary, I agree with what you said. And um, the Bible is clear that God is our creator. So he made us. He has the right to tell us what um, he's going to do with us and where we go after we die, whether heaven or hell. So there's no intermediate mm. area where, where dead people will go in the sense of what we understand culturally as ghosts. That's all we have for you this session. We hope you enjoyed that. If you like this, subscribe to our channel and go to our website and type in uh, Ghost Real into our search engine. And Gary Bates has a long article that deals with that in much more depth. Thank you.